Uh, so really exciting today. We've shown off um, a really key part of the story, new story character. Um, we've also shown off an entirely new region of the game, which is the Sea of Nern, so hundreds of miles deep into Mordor. Um, we've shown off some new features. We've shown off that you can not only dominate and bend these orcs to your will, but also the beasts and monsters of Mord um, Mordor. So we've had Karagor riding. And the thing we've been really excited about is getting people to get hands on with the game as well. So the character we showed today is Queen Marwyn. So basically, um, Sauron has been away from Mordor for 2,000 years. Gondor conquered Mordor, but then their kingdom has slowly fallen apart and withdrawn. And then so deep within Mordor, um, basically the leftovers of the kingdom of Gondor is now being ruled by Queen Marwyn. And she's organizing the resistance. She's holding out against Sauron's forces. And so she summoned Talion, your character, deeper into Mordor to help but also um, there's more going on there. Basically she holds some of the mysteries and some of the keys to the wraith that's within Talion and, and both to finding out the identity of that wraith, finding out how they're connected to the rings of power and to Sauron, but also um, increasing your power. So now you can do more than simply hunt down your enemies. You can actually dominate them, bend them to your will and actually create uh, an army of orcs behind enemy lines in Mordor. So the Sea of Nernan, um, which is the new area that we've shown, so this is very, very different to what we've seen in Mordor before. This is very lush, very fertile. Um, when, you know, in Lord of the Rings we learn this is the way that Sauron manages to feed his vast armies because he'll have slaves farming, you know, these fields. He'll be uh, drawing fish from the sea here. So this is really key to the, the operation of Mordor. So it's a really good place to, to get behind enemy lines and, and try and uh, disrupt his plans. So the, the one we showed today are the Karagors, so they're basically the alpha predators, they're the big cats of Mordor, so um, what a warg is to a wolf, this thing is to, to a lion. And the great thing with them is you can dominate them, you can use them as a mount, and they can do uh, a bunch of stuff that mounts normally can't do in games. So as big cats, they're very, very good at climbing, they're extremely good in combat, um, they're extremely fast, so they really augment um, your power there as well. So, um, yeah, Mordor is an interesting place because it's had thousands of years of history. Uh, so the Ungol, which is the, the black speech word for spiders, um, we do st sort of start to touch on that. But this is 60 years before the War of the Rings, so her relationship with, with Sauron is kind of interesting. Um, and then basically there's a lot of ways that you can uncover more of the lore and more of the backstory, whether it's through the story missions, whether it's discovering artifacts, whether it's exploring the lore. We really, you know, want to enable players to learn uh, a lot more about the backstory and about the world as well. The sort of big story moments that we got with this one is how the, the Nemesis system, which really is our key innovation, it's what makes this a truly living world. You're creating um, your own unique bosses, your own unique sub-bosses, your own memorable moments. And what we really wanted to show today is how that dynamic living world ties together with the story and with Marwan's story of how to uh, how to grow your powers and who the wraith is and you know really how it all ties together both the story and the nemesis system that they're not they're not two separate things it's all, all part of the overall uh, package of Shadow of Mordor. So Queen Marwan gives you your goal. She's like. Uh, this is how you can grow your power. This is how you can create an army. Uh, this is the power that the Wraith gives you. So she presents you with that story goal, but how you go about achieving that goal is going to be completely different for every player. So it's a combination of, of really having a very, very authentic story driving it forward, but uh, giving players a totally unprecedented level of freedom and choice and creativity about how they actually pursue that story goal. You can definitely go up another another gear in terms of the scale of things once you can dominate the war chiefs and all of their bodyguards and you can send them against each other. So you can definitely make these, you know, uh, larger scale fights between these war chiefs that are pretty epic. And that, that's what's exciting about the power of next gen and the, the fact that we can, you know, have uh, really large numbers of troops and, and really escalate it uh, as you go through the game as well. 
literally like 20 minutes ago I was watching, it was fantastic. There was this, um, this captain, was, we were hunting him down, suddenly uh, exploded this fire, he was in flames, he freaked out, he started fleeing and running away. And we had, uh, this other captain was there, who was one of our followers, chased the guy, grabbed him, grabbed him by the top of his burning head, started pounding his burning head into the ground. Like, I'd never seen that before in my life. It was, it was totally awesome. So those sort of memorable moments are just every, every day. It's amazing. We're working on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions, and Behaviour is another studio. They're 100% dedicated on the um, Xbox 360 and PS3 versions, and we're obviously helping and supporting them. Um, so we don't know exactly you know, where, the, where it's going to end up in terms of the, the feature parity, but they're totally focused on making that the best version they can. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor comes out on October 7th and it's coming out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. <laughs>